My name is Ivan Espinosa, and it's really a privilege to share this stage with such distinguished leaders. Uh, I want to start by saying that I was raised by a single mom who brought me here when I was nine. And um, my mom cleaned toilets to put food on the table and pay the rent. Uh, we lived in a public housing project in a low-income community of color. And I am the first person in my family to go to college, let alone law school. And I, since as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to know what the landlord could do if we fell back on the rent. I wanted to know what a cop could do if they pulled us over for no reason on the road. Like, I wanted to know what were the rights that we had, what were the rights that my mom had, what were the protections that we were entitled to that were constantly being violated when I was growing up. You know, and today, I have the privilege of running the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. You know, and, and in running the Lawyers Committee, it's something that's deeply personal to me. It's very personal based on my experiences of growing up as an immigrant, of growing up in poverty. And even today, every case that we file at the Lawyers Committee, I see my mom reflected in it. I see my community, I see my neighborhood, I see the people who I grew up with, you know. Uh, I am the youngest uh, executive director in the Lawyers Committee's history. I am the first openly gay executive director of the <laughs> Lawyers Committee. And I am also the first Latino executive director of the Lawyers Committee. You know, and I think it's, there's something special about running the oldest and largest civil rights organization in New England at this particular time in the current climate that we're living in. You know, at the Lawyers Committee, uh, people, people always uh, come to me and they're like, how do you file your cases? Where do you find your clients? You know, how do you know the direction that you should be shooting in? It's from you guys. It's from people like you coming to us, telling us, we want you to move on this. We need this done. We want change in this particular area. And it's using that community-driven model to do the work and to set priorities for our communities that's what has catapulted the Lawyers Committee, which is a small organization. We have seven lawyers, two paralegals. We run on a church mouse budget. But that's what's catapulted this organization and fueled this organization to be suing not, not just once, but twice against President Trump, once to save sanctuary cities, and just days ago to save TPS on behalf of Haitians and Salvadorians. <laughs> You know, so I'm, I'm particularly proud that this work is being run locally, that this, run, that this work is being, being done out of an organization that's right here in Boston. You know, it's not coming from a large, sophisticated national organization. It's coming from people like you and me who are doing this work. And I think that's, there's something special about that. There's something special about being able to showcase that all of us have a dog in this fight, and that all of us have a voice that we can be asserting to protect ourselves, to protect our families, and to protect our communities. You know, one thing at the Lawyers Committee that, that I think we realized very quickly, particularly after the election, is that nobody is going to come to save us. Nobody. We have to save ourselves. And I think the biggest hurdle for doing that is respectability politics. And uh, this, this idea that we need to avoid controversy. El que dirán? El que van a pensar de mí? You know, you can't rock the boat. You can't ruffle feathers. You have to know your place, and you shouldn't speak out of turn. Well, to hell with all of that. <laughs> you know, it is... It's so important for all of us to speak our truth and to find empowerment from within and with each other. You know, and I think, and a lot of this, and I, and I want to quote Audre Lorde, your silence will not protect you. 
And I deeply believe in that. We have to have the courage of our convictions. For advocacy and resistance, we have to be able to feel uncomfortable. We did not get our freedom and our rights from the safety of comfort. We need people like us to be doing this work, and we need it not because we're afraid, but because we have to take this challenge on for ourselves. We need to roll up our sleeves and get ready to be messy. One of the things that, that, that a lot of people ask us is, well, you know, aren't you afraid that people don't like you? You know, what I tell my team, one of them is here, you know, I don't care if people like me. I don't care if people like the Lawyers Committee. I need people to respect me, and I need people to respect the Lawyers Committee, and I need people to respect our clients. That's what I need. So don't like me, respect us. And I think one, one important part of this is that we also have to be comfortable with ourselves. You know, I didn't bring my whole self to work until I fully came out. And I mean that very broadly. I had to embrace not just my sexual orientation, but also other aspects of my lived experience from growing up in poverty and surviving domestic violence to having undocumented family members. All of these things are things that I carry with me and that I need to bring out and use and capitalize on that and use that as fuel for the work that we're doing every day and not surround that with shame and fear. So in closing, I'm challenging all of us here to roll up our sleeves and to get messy. And I want us all to remember that power is our birthright. Yeah. My name is Ivan Espinosa, and this is how I amplify. Woo!